Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning. We acknowledge we are all treaty people living on Treaty 4 land. We give thanks for the land and those who were the original stewards, the Cree, Soto, Lakota, Dakota, Nakota nations in southern Saskatchewan, as well as the Métis. We give thanks for one another. We commit ourselves to the ongoing work of reconciliation as Indigenous and non-Indigenous siblings. Let us pre prepare for worship as we sing Peace for the Children. <laughs> As we join in worship today, I invite you to think ahead to Remembrance Day. We gather in hope with the determination to find peaceful ways of living together. We yearn for a planet that will sustain all creation. We dream of respect, acceptance, and dignity for all people. May the spirit of life and love strengthen us for this great task. And I would invite Bev to come up to light our candles, please. And your responses are in bold print. We light the Christ candle, thinking ahead to Remembrance Day. The Christ, Christ candle reminds us that the light of Christ shines on the road to peace and illuminates our most difficult hours. And we light the candles of remembrance. They remind us of the supreme sacrifice of those who have defended and continue to defend peace and freedom. They remind us of the sacrifice of those left to mourn the loss of loved ones, they remind us of those who returned with physical injuries and PTSD. They remind us that we must all work for peace. Thank you, Bev. Our opening prayer this morning is taken from our hymn book on page Voices United on page 525, but it is also printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Holy One, source of all creation, whose image lies in the hearts of all people, we live among peoples whose languages are different from our own, whose faiths are foreign to us, whose ways we fail to understand. Help us to remember that you embrace all people with your love, that all religion is a response to you, that the yearnings of other hearts are much like our own and are known to you. Help us to recognize you in words of truth, things of beauty, and actions of love about us. We pray in the name of one who calls us to be neighbor and friend. Amen. And our opening hymn this morning is number 143 in More Voices. We cannot own the sunlit sky.
a wonderful wish that peace may endure forever. Today's um, service is based on Remembrance Day, since Remembrance Day comes this week, and also the fact that none of us can be an innocent bystander where peace and justice are concerned. So my theme time story today is one that I think was in one of the Sunday school lessons of the whole people of God years ago. I just happened to be filing through my stuff this week in my Remembrance Day file and found it. So I'd like to share this story with you. One Sunday, a little boy named Jamie didn't understand what the minister meant when she said, Blessed are those who make peace, for they shall be called the children of God. How do you make peace, he wondered. So Jamie spent his week asking everyone he knew about peace. He wanted to know, what is peace? What does it look like? Where can I find it? He had so many unanswered questions. The most amazing thing about this was that no one he asked told him that peace was something negative, that it was lack of war or an end to fighting. They never put it in the negative. They always gave him a positive response to what peace was, what it looked like, and how it could be created. So first of all, naturally, he asked his mom and dad, who said, peace in our home and family is the love that we share as a family. The baker who donated yesterday's baked goods to the school lunch program told Jamie that peace was knowing every child at school had a full tummy because no one can concentrate on math with a grumbly stomach. Jamie's neighbor was gardening, and when he asked her about peace, she said, I find peace in the beauty and stillness of my garden, and she gave him some fresh carrots to take home to his mother. Jamie's week went by with peace being defined as fairness, listening to each other, not stepping on one another's toes, helping one another, caring and sharing. On the weekend, he visited his great-grandpa, who happened to be a war veteran, and Jamie asked him the same question. Great-grandpa said, we make peace when we try to keep the world a good place for all, for everyone and everything. Peace is when the strong look after the weak ones, not just themselves. Peace is when the children are most important. Peace is the greatest gift we can give every child. And we're going to sing an old hymn in Voices United number 577, I've Got Peace Like a River. <laughs> Christine and Richard. That was wonderful. Let us join together in our prayer of renewal. In this week of remembrance, we pray for peace. We seek awareness of the source of love and peace, common to us all and to all living things. 
We regret the times we forget our human bonds. We forget that many ways, in many ways we are the same, and instead we focus on our differences. We overlook the images of the holy all around us, not just in joy and happiness, but also in the faces of sorrow, in the outstretched hands of poverty, in the pain and rejection of injustice. We forget that all living things are interrelated, all nourished by the same source of life. May we be aware of the harms we cause and cease to play a part in the suffering of this planet. With humility and awe of the sacredness of life and the sacredness of this earth, may we strive to establish peace in all our living. Amen. And our commitment to new life is in unison, please. We join with the earth and with each other. We create the human community to promote justice and peace, to remember our children. We join together as many and diverse expressions of one loving mystery for the healing of the earth and the renewal of all life. And let us continue together in our prayer for insight. We gather together knowing we can safely express our faith, ask our questions, face our doubts, and seek answers. May your spirit move among us, bringing openness, faith, and hope. Fill our hearts with your word and your wisdom. Amen. Our opening, or pardon me, our response of psalm this morning is number 127 from page 851 in Voices United. And we have the response printed in our uh, bulletin first, so I'm wondering if we could sing the response first to give everybody an idea of how it sounds, and then we will do our responsive reading. <laughs> Unless God builds a house, its builders have labored in vain. Unless God watches over the city, those who keep watch stay awake in vain. In vain you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. For those whom God loves are given sleep. <laughs> children are a gift from God, and offspring a reward from God's hand. Like arrows in a warrior's hand, so indeed are the children of one's youth. Happy are those who have their quiver full of them. They will not be put to shame when they meet their adversaries at the gate. Our scripture this morning is from Mark chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. Warning against the teachers of the law. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and, for a show, make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, 
This poor woman has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. May the message in this story give us insight and courage to walk our own paths of faith today. And now, if the choir would please sing. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Divine Presence, as we seek to understand your message for us this day, may we hear the cry of all creation. May we seek wisdom to follow in the paths of justice and peace. And may we embrace new ways of understanding and expressing our relationship with you. Amen. A couple of timely quotes to begin. In the words of Mother Teresa, if we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. And when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. Those words are often attributed to musician and songwriter Jimi Hendrix. And from Romans 14, verse 17, For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. In light of our scripture reading today, these three quotes carry a timely message. Inequality, violence, and hardship of every kind have been around forever. I approach the topic of peace, or the lack of peace, with records of pain and violence sitting on the communion table. Pain and violence, a newspaper and a Bible. Both are full of war and hatred and injustice. Why? Because both are records of our human story. They are both full of inaccuracies, simply because they were written by people who brought their personal understanding of their world, their own experience, and their biases to their writing. As a record of our humanity, they also contain stories of hope and caring and sharing and loving one another. Last week, I talked about rethinking our biblical stories. And today's scripture is another one that presents us with so much more than the obvious self-sacrifice of the poor woman. 
In fact, the title of this section of scripture doesn't mention the woman and her lost coins at all. It states, Jesus warns against the teachers of the law. So what does this story offer us? There is no word of an opportunity to lift this poor woman out of her poverty. She's victim of a society where a woman's identity and survival is dependent upon her connection with a male. We cannot fathom her desperate living situation, so we gloss over the problem and think how noble of her to give everything she had. If we look at the Greek and Hebrew words for widow, their root words suggest helplessness, emptiness, and being forsaken. And that was the exact situation for widows in biblical times. And this still exists in many countries and in many situations right here in Canada. Without husbands or sons to support them, the outlook for many women is bleak. Think back to Ruth and Naomi. Naomi's greatest concern was that Ruth would not be able to find a husband to provide her with a home and protection. And then we look at the widow's sacrifice, giving her last two coins. How very generous. But we must be very careful not to moralize and not to use this story for our own purposes. How often have we heard this scripture read on Stewardship Sunday? Look what the poor widow gave. Listen to the praise she received from Jesus. Should we not follow her example? Instead of taking this story literally and making the widow out to be very heroic, perhaps the writer Mark had a completely different purpose. Perhaps he's calling to account a system, a system that abuses the poor and the marginalized. Throughout his gospel, Mark focuses on a system that overlooks those in need and abuses those existing on the fringes of society. Jesus isn't simply praising the woman. He's condemning the religious exploitation of the temple and condemning the religious system which abuses the pure, poor. He's calling out the people who perpetuate that system. Today, we still use religion, power, and politics to keep the poor down and powerless and vulnerable. It's time for us to call out the system as well. We try to be good people, to do good deeds. Heck, I feel good every time I make a donation to a charity or I take food to the community fridges and pantries. And I think my feeling good is quite normal. I tell myself I'm doing the best I can at the time. I know that real long-term help is needed. But what can we do about the system that denies people safety and personal security? Food banks were established decades ago as a fallback short-term solution. They're still here. And now we have social service agencies referring people to food banks. Instead, we need to stand up and lobby governments for adequate income security. Poverty, racism, addictions, homelessness, lack of family support, all of these and many more obstacles make it nearly impossible for some people to live a life that you and I take for granted. The following story was in the November 3rd edition of the Leader Post, and I quote, The little Afghan girl hesitated as she was led from her home and tried to pull away to stay with her family. The white-bearded man who had just brought her, bought her took her arm and insisted she follow him to his waiting car. He had paid her poverty-stricken parents $2,700 for their nine-year-old daughter, and now she belonged to him. Earlier, her reluctant father had said, 
Here is your bride. Please take care of her. Please don't beat her. This is a common scenario as destitute Afghan, Afghanistan parents are forced to sell their daughters so that the remaining members of the family can sit down and eat while the world and you and I stand by. We sit down to a meal, fresh fruit and veggies in the winter, coffee and tea, chocolate for dessert, all shipped from foreign countries, from places where one third of the population live on less than $2 a day. And we stand by and let it happen. But why, we ask ourselves, do we allow this to continue? Children shouldn't have to be sold. Workers shouldn't have to break their backs to make a living while we go on enjoying cheap food. I was in the grocery store the other day and I caught myself grumbling to myself about paying $3.50 for a head of lettuce. I'm sure most of you remember when you could buy it for 79 cents. I was angry, afraid the profits from that lettuce were lining the pockets of investors and not making life any better for the workers who had done all the toil. Whoops, good thought, but then I reminded myself, my pensions are likely part of those investments, keeping the workers poor. How eth ethical am I as I stand by? Is our world so immune to the pain of others that we no longer listen to the cries? Not only, our, not only of our world, but our community has become a place of us and them. For Jesus, there was no us and them, no colored or white, rich or poor, no racial, religious, or gender barriers. What was good for one had to be good for all. Jesus taught that everyone is our neighbor, and especially the one who is hurting. Empathy is evaporating in our world. And where there is no empathy, there is no compassion. And when compassion is gone, war and violence ensue. And all the Remembrance Day services in the world won't bring peace. I have a story, I'd, another story I'd like to share with you. A couple of years ago, I listened to a sermon given by Bonnie Morton, one of the ministers at Regina Anti-Poverty Ministry. And so this week, I asked her if I could share her experience that she had shared with us in church. And this is her story. She was walking into a grocery store and saw an elderly Aboriginal woman begging for spare change to buy some eggs and milk. The man walking ahead of Bonnie said, you stupid squaw, get out of here. You couldn't get enough money if you spread your legs for it. Well, if you know Bonnie, she is never a bystander. She gave that man a verbal whiplashing in words that I didn't know ministers could use. <laughs> the translation into pulpit-friendly words was, he should be ashamed of himself treating an elder that way, or anyone else for that matter. The man continued his barrage of profanities, and another couple of women stepped up and started verbally accosting him. So Bonnie led the woman into the store, bought her the eggs and milk she needed. A bystander called 911, and as Bonnie and the lady were leaving the store, the police were already there, asking Bonnie and the lady for a statement, and charging the man with a hate crime. This proves it is vital to stand up for someone and help to make even a small difference. Writer June Col Colwell said, the term innocent bystander is an untruth. Those who do nothing when things are amiss give permission for the justice to continue, injustice to continue. 
Each day we pause on Remembrance Day to honour those who have lost their lives in war, those who returned with PTSD or physical injuries, and those who mourn the injury or death of loved ones. As a culture, we become conditioned to violence, violence in our movies, our TV, and our social media. We find it difficult to empathize as we munch on our supersized popcorn at the theaters. Empathy comes hard in a world of we and them as we watch the news on TV. And then we hear people say, do you know how many immigrants those liberals are allowing into Canada this year? What a sad attitude. I don't know about you, but I'm not starving. My home hasn't been bombed, nor my family tortured. How can we as a rich, safe and secure nation turn our backs on those in such desperate need? We sing, let us build a house where all are welcome. All are welcome in this place. What do we mean by this place? Is it our safe, secure little church? Or is it our country? We can dream of a city where young people aren't killed at Halloween parties, where all communities have clean, safe water to drink, where the homeless don't have to sleep in tents, or moms go to food banks and community pantries to feed their families. We don't need neighborhoods where empty houses sit boarded up instead of being homes filled with the joy and laughter of children. We don't need places of employment where people can't earn a living wage or they can't get time off for illness and family emergencies. In Isaiah 65, the prophet dreams of a new world, much like a dream we have today. And what Isaiah sees is not all that exceptional. It might be found in any political platform today. Our children and youth should not die. Our workers shouldn't be unemployed. Families should not be evicted. Everyone should feel safe. Isaiah goes on to a larger picture, one that lies outside of politics or history itself, a picture of the wolf and the lamb feeding out of the same trough, as if to say to Israel and all nations, seems that I can see miracles of peace. You don't have to crush your enemy to get to the new Jerusalem. You don't have to destroy your neighbor to win. And winning does not count, but peace and reconciliation do. If anyone is in Christ, that is the new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new is come. May we cherish the opportunity to gather on Remembrance Day. May we be thankful for what we have, but more importantly, may we stand with those who need us the most. Amen. And our hymn is number 179, Sisters Let Us Walk Together, 179.
I'd like Lisa to uh, read our minute for mission, please. Yeah, for mission is titled a step toward peace. One of the things we can do to promote peace is to share what we have to ensure that everyone has enough. That's why your generosity through mission and service supports economic development programs that offer things like microloans and business training and support to purchase equipment. Leila Bashir is a 46-year-old mother of five who lives in a village in the northwestern part of the West Bank in Palestine. Leila's husband is in poor health, which makes it hard to get by. Since she was a child, Leila has been preserving carob paste, which helps with upset stomach. Four years ago, as her family struggled, she had the idea to sell her carob paste, but processing it by hand is labor intensive, so she turned to DSPR, the Department of Service, to Palestine refugees for help. As I made some profit from local sales, I decided to expand. DSPR helped me out with buying grinding equipment that facilit facilitated making carob paste enormously, she says. The outcome is amazing. Not only can Layla produce high quality paste, but her income has also grown. The grinding equipment helped me increase my income by 40%. I look forward to buying a second grinding machine this time to produce tomato paste, says Layla. Palestinians in the West Bank are subject to complex systems of control. These systems of control include physical barriers like the separation wall, checkpoints, and roadblocks. The bureaucratic ones like permits and closure of areas. These restrict Palestinians right to freedom of movement. The Israeli occupation has <coughs> confiscated thousands of dunams, one dunam equals 1,000 square meters of land from Palestinian farmers to build legal sediments, bypass roads, and build the separation wall. Moreover, the checkpoints, roadblocks, and crop destruction create extreme challenges for farmers attempting to reach their land and their markets. Every step we take to support families like Layla's brings us a step closer to peace and justice. Thank you for your generosity through mission and service. <coughs> Thank you so very much, Lisa. That story reminds us just how very important our mission and service dollars are, and probably more so in this time of COVID. Blessings. I can't even count mine. Can you? Even on the bleakest day, there is a gift of light if only we look. As we offer our gifts, we bring light and hope to others. And as we continue to offer those gifts in the many different ways during COVID, through uh, online, and I don't know what magic ways you get your money into Margaret, but I know it happens, so <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> Let us sing our operatory hymn, What Can I Do?
notice by now that's my very favorite offertory hymn. <laughs> Let us join together in prayer in unison. God of peace, as we offer our gifts today, we pray that they will contribute to a world that is more caring, forgiving, and peaceful. May we follow in Jesus' example to live radically, love fully, and seek justice for all. Amen. Okay, announcements. I think you all have the uh, bulletin in, fr in front of you at home if you're online, and uh, those of us that are in the choir and technology people today. So our third quarter financial update is there for you to uh, consider, and uh, if possible, if you can manage an extra contribution towards St. James in these last months of the year, that would be greatly appreciated. We haven't been able to enjoy all the, the fundraisers that uh, we usually do in a year. And in worship uh, is still suspended until the COVID situation gets to a reasonable place where we feel comfor comfortable uh, resuming in-person church. Sunday school drop-off is still continuing and our Sunday school kids are busy this morning creating a big colorful box for the Rainbow Youth Center donations and someone created this and left it at the office and I don't know whether Daniel did this or Margaret or whoever it was but whoever did it I thank you. Rainbow Youth have um, become our partners again this year for Christmas giving. And they have a Christmas stocking project in which they collect items to uh, fill Christmas stockings. So you don't have to bring a bag to the church. Uh, there will be a nice big box, but this bag simply shows us some of the things we can put into, the, into it, like brand new mitts. They ask for all new items, new toques, Oh, there's storybooks and coloring books and shampoo and soap and uh, I got to show it, a baby bib, a wonderful baby bib, and toothbrushes and crayons and all other wonderful kinds of things that people will enjoy getting from Rainbow Youth. So if you can help support some of the young people that attend Rainbow Youth, it is very often young parents um, who need things for their small children or, or just young, um, young adults or teens themselves. So some of those items would be greatly appreciated. Or if you would like to donate a gift card, you can purchase one at, they would like Shoppers Drug, Shoppers Drug Mart or Walmart cards. And um, all of these things we would like to receive on or before Thursday, December the 9th. Now, Margaret said the church will be open on Tuesday mornings and Friday mornings, yes, um, from 9 till 11.30. So if you uh, want to drop something off at the church, that would be great. And offering envelopes will also be available to pick up at the church at that time. So thank you to whoever was the kind person who made that up. I love having props. That helps. <laughs> Wednesday morning coffee is starting again online on Wednesday, November the 10th at 10 a.m. And the uh, website and passcode are in your bulletin. Relax on the Broadway renewal. It's not due till January, February. I think I gave Sharon Wood a minor heart attack when I announced last week that subscriptions were due. It's not till January or February. Craft and bake sale have been cancelled. Our book group is continuing on Monday afternoons. And we still need Facebook live stream volunteers. And if anyone has a problem or something they would like to discuss or just have a visit, uh, Diane and myself are available for a chat and our phone numbers are in the bulletin as well. Wider community, there's a CGIT fundraiser coming up and the Lumsden Beach Annual Meeting. 
Westminster United Church is having a mistletoe market on November the 20th, that's a Saturday from 1 to 4, with all sorts of good stuff there for sale. And Speaking Grief is a program being offered, or an evening discussion, I guess, being offered by Spears uh, Funeral Center, and uh, it's Tuesday, November 16th at 7 o'clock. So if anyone would like to attend that, uh, the numbers are in your bulletin as well. So I think that is, is there something else I was supposed to announce? I hope not. I have this feeling that I was told something last night and was going to write it down and didn't. But Oh well, forgiveness, forgiveness should come easy in a church, so I will hope. As we begin our prayers for the people this morning, we are going to be concluding it with the uh, Lord's Prayer paraphrase uh, by Dr. John Hawes, Reverend Dr. John Hawes. So that is printed in your bulletin. And also as we uh, start our prayers, we would like to keep uh, Christine Beer's family, uh, especially her brother Dave, in our thoughts and prayers as they grieve the sudden death of Dave's daughter. So our hearts go out to you folks. Let us pray. Holy One, you move us each day to seek peace and hope. In places where fear and anxiety reign supreme, we search for calm and caring. Your creation overflows with people caught up in the struggle to live, people who don't have enough to survive, not enough bread, not enough clothing, not enough homes, not enough freedom, not enough dignity, and not enough hope. Creation cries out as beautiful valleys become dumps, great oceans become polluted, fields and gardens are overwhelmed with chemicals. So we pray for all creation, that life will be renewed in all forms. We give thanks for the blessings that surround us daily. Sometimes we recognize these gifts other times, we simply take them for granted. We, are see, we see our hope in the children throughout our world, and we pray that they will be nurtured by loving families, that they will inherit a world where water is pure, the land is fertile, and there is peace. Our hope is that all children will find joy and a sense of purpose, and that they will be free to develop their own gifts and talents. God, remind us we are a church, each one of us, and create in us an accepting fellowship and eagerness to serve others. And now we pray together as one in hope and peace, sharing the words in our bulletin. Unknowable mystery, we honor the presence of the holy in our midst. May the kingdom flourish among us. May we have only what we need each day that all might have enough and for tomorrow. May we be generous in offering our forgiveness as we have been humbled and grateful in being forgiven. May we be strengthened through our trials and may we face evil with courage, truth, and love. We pray in Jesus' name. May we also walk in his way. Amen. And our closing hymn this morning is 173 from More Voices, Put Peace Into Each Other's Hands.
We leave this time of worship and remembrance in deep gratitude for the sacrifices of those who gave their lives and those who were scarred by war. We leave knowing that there is no shortcut to peace. We leave strengthened to speak for justice and equality, ready to tell the stories, for it is in remembering that we are strengthened and renewed. May there be peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, and peace in our world. Amen. For our response is 221. Blessings on your week, and may you be a blessing to all you meet. Amen.